11 minutes after 7 and it's time for State of the Nation. And well, just a quick reintroduction of who we have in studio. I'm joined by Honorable Beatrice Elachi and also Honorable Kibruto Arab Kirwa. And let's just to set the pace for the conversation. Now, the Embrace Women Building Bridges Kenya Caucus has now changed tact in their push for to have equal gender representation both in government and in the private sector. The caucus that brings on board elected women in various positions as well as private sector now demands for a constitutional change that, sub, that is subject to the issues of representation to a referendum before the 2022 general polls, arguing that the push to have the two-thirds gender bill passed in as an exercise is, is an exercise in futility. After a series of meetings in various counties in a bid to bring together women leaders from different sectors countrywide, under the banner Embrace Women Building Bridges Kenya Cookers, it was time to launch the outfit. With the meeting, being graced by Ida Odinga, the wife to ODM party leader Raila Odinga, Youth and Gender Cabinet Secretary Margaret Kobia, and the three women governors. Their resolution was to do away with the two-thirds gender bill. There can be nothing for us without us. Don't think somebody will promote you. We must promote ourselves. And we must go there for ourselves. We now do not ask for two-thirds anymore yes. keep it yes. we are going for it yes. let's go for it who says that who says that we cannot say well, this is the woman we want to be the president of kenya and this to be the prime minister and this one to be why is it that we are waiting to be given we move to propose a simpler formula 50 percent of the productive workforce is made up of women let us have 50% organic representation of women by women in all tiers of government. Instead, the Women Caucus is pushing to have the question on representation feature prominently in a referendum in case there is an opportunity to amend the constitution before the 2022 general polls. Nobody, nobody will invite you on that decision-making table. Please make sure that you push people out of that decision-making table <laughs> so that you sit there. And from here, I hope we'll be able to present our referendum to powers that be. One reason why women suffer more is because of economic empowerment. Yeah. So you can suffer twice. You are being discriminated because of your gender, one, and we are being discriminated because we are poor. Nobody is coming to give you anything. <laughs> don't expect anything and don't keep on pointing fingers. Wewe ulisha fika sasa umesa hau sisi. Wewe umefika hapa na wewe uja. Who is that who we are waiting to come and carry you from the village and tell you, come and take this seat, please come. Who is that who is going to do that? Women legislators have been unable to convince their men counterparts to pass the two-thirds gender bill in five attempts, both in the 11th and the 12th parliaments. Chris De Roketia News. All right, so let me start with you, Madam Beatrice Elachi. And uh, from what we've had there, it looks like women have decided they're coming together and now it's not a matter of bargaining, but it's taking uh, their rightful place, literally. <laughs> you know, when you look at the history, let me start with uh, the gender rule. Look at that history. We've walked a journey. With Mama Fipia Ma Mama Fipi CEO, in the 1980s, we come... Mama Beth Mugo brings it in Parliament also. At that time, we were just starting the process of the Bomas uh, Constitution. Mm. And we were told as women at that time, and as we were young students then, and we were told, no, 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 we are coming into a process of uh, constitution making, and therefore, we will ensure that this matter is this matter dealt with. Is dealt with. Mm. And we come at uh, 2005, and you find ourselves very politicized, and what happened? It failed. The whole uh, thing just, we lost it as women. And most of us were in banana, not because we loved that banana. No, because that is where the gains of women were being channeled. And we knew if this draft goes through, 
we have the gains of women. But thank God the women again stayed together through the women caucuses that we have, the National Women Consensus Team. And we made sure now when Jokindungo and the expert team of Daktari Okot sat together, we ensured we followed the process even at Naivasha to ensure those gains of women have been retained. But we were unable completely again to get we got the principle, yes. When you look at Article 27, 81, all these articles we talk about, you find, yes, you're supposed to have one third of either gender in two thirds of either gender in parliament. But up to today, even it's with true. the four cases that we've had in court, Judge Mumbi, everyone speaking, I mean, and, and giving a ruling that the last ruling was parliament is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. But where are we? We now have again Duale begging again members of parliament with his bill that look here and, and, and we need to finalize this it might be critical to first of all interrogate why it has failed so far before we even go to the strategy that you're going to use yes because it looks like now <laughs> uh, the law has tried yes uh, to go you've tried to go to court there's several judgments even rendering parliament unconstitutional but still it has not it has worked, worked. It hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. And, and then I look at the Council of Governors, and I just want to make a joke on it, that they do elections, and they decide they, they, there's no need of a woman. I think even in the room they were saying, but you are governors. Who said you, you can't bring that gender thing here? All of you are governors. If you wanted to be women in gender, you'd mm. have gone for the women's seats. I believe one man would have just told them that, because <laughs> how they lost it and they decided, <laughs> no, we can have two men. The, the, the chair and the, deputy, and, and the deputy, you can imagine. So mm -hmm. if it can start in all those institutions, then it is time we are saying, as you say, even this is, that is in parliament, mm -hmm. we are so worried because we don't know. But the best is, if we indeed we have this process, and women must push for this process, that once and for all, we must es express it clearly mm -hmm. in the constitution, that when we are coming back, this is how we are saying. This is how we are looking at We are at saying uh, if you are a man and you are a governor, then let her, uh, a woman how, be a, as a deputy. And you can imagine when women are governors, mm. the three women we have, and we want to thank them so, so much, but who are their, governor, uh, their deputies? They are men. Mm. You know, you don't debate about it. Mm. But now when it comes to men, they don't care whether the deputy is a man or, or, a, a, woman. or a woman. All right, Honorable Kirwa, maybe to interrogate why this gender bill has been such a tough challenge, despite the fact that it has been discussed time and again, it has been enshrined in law, it is in the Constitution, but still, it remains a challenge. Well, uh, society is a self-regulating organism. You, you, you cannot use an external factor to regulate society, including the laws of the land. We might have passed the, the rule, even made it into the constitutional requirement, but our society is still living in the past where the role of women is not fully appreciated. Because we did it, but we never thought through what is a practical way of doing it, mm. because you subject people to elections, they elect women, they reject women. So at the end of the day, the parliament that you get is a product of people's wishes. Now. How do you deal with it in a way that you are able to maintain one third rule? That a minimum of uh, women must be a third of the current composition of parliament. They have tried through women rep, they have th tried through nomination in terms of the Senate, of uh, about uh, a third of them are supposed to be women nominated, and, but it is not working. Mm. What we need to do is to re-engage our minds and say what is a practical way of promoting women in terms of elective positions. And uh, my practical way is proportional representation, where you say we, we have 290 constituencies and all the parties running in those 290 constituencies shall have one man or one woman, two men, one woman, two men, and on the basis of the votes that you get, then you, you put the slot like Nairobi, if you get 50% of the votes, you get about nine MPs mm -hmm. who are properly constituted. Mm. And that's the only way you can practically deal with it. Otherwise, uh, mm. setting women against men 
it, it, it becomes be an difficult. An task. And, and maybe just to make it very clear that the two third gender, it's gender, not women. It gender. Is, it, yeah. it is gender. It's so there's gender. a time that it can come where you have more women than men. Yeah. And then the men would have to, you know, uh, ensure, or the women would have to ensure that uh, there's the two thirds gender bill. But uh, Honorable Elachi, in terms of your proposal now as Team Embrace, and maybe just for the sake of Kenyans, we need to understand what is Team Embrace? What exactly is, because, you know, it came about after there was an attack, I think, on the president from some side, and women said, look, we're not going back where we came from. Yes. As women, we have the power to speak. Let us come together. Yes. But now it seems to be morphing into something which we don't understand. Is it a political party? Is no. it a movement? <laughs> what, what, what exactly is Team Embrace? Well, uh, Team Embrace, first of all, draws women from all walks of lives, mm -hmm. and therefore for we have professionals in, we have politicians in, we have faith-based in, all women. And we are and not just women, but uh, youth, young women, and women. But we are saying with one voice, the voices of women, that look here. 2018, a very, very tough year for Kenyans. 2017, the worst year for Kenyans, that we went into a a year of politics that were very polarized, divisive politics, came to an nullification, felt that the country is going, but God said, no, we are still here. Mm. We picked it back, and now we are saying, after March 9, that handshake cooled down everything. So a presidential candidate, even being sworn in, like now in Venezuela, we thank God uh, the prime minister was more... Uh, and he understood most of these things. But mm. can you imagine if you had a guy like the guy who is now in Venezuela? Mm. Where will who Kenya be today? Yes. Mm. So we are saying, as women, again, 2019, we said, no, we can't start again on that slid. Let us hear the voice of the president. He's pleading. He's saying, look, I would wish we tone down, mm -hmm. have the politics go on, uh, mm. make Kenya work. Let Kenyans, uh, the SMEs come back, uh, do their businesses. Most of them are hurting. And that's why we came together and we said, first of all, let us respect the handshake. Let us say we are all together as Kenyans. We belong here. And this is our space, all of us. And we just need to respect each other and work together. That was the best voice. And then from there, we decide now as a country, where are we headed? You have the big four agenda, he has his legacy, and we will want to enjoy ourselves in this legacy because mm. every Kenyan would wish to know, you are talking of a big four, a big four agenda of housing. Of, if we are in those, in a polarized situation, mm. we won't even know when the houses are ending, who has taken the house, and then we'll start again fighting ourselves. Oh, how come? Moshimua Kirwa has 10 houses and uh, women have nothing. Mm. It's because the noises. Uh, who painted the houses? You have no idea. We want to see if it's the big four, what are women coming in to do within that big four? And mm. we're not saying just taking the house. We are saying there's painting, there's buying of cement. There's a lot that women so, can so engage team in. Embrace, in team, with Team Embrace, is there a vision? Is there a mission? Uh, do we have leadership? Well, uh, uh, being a movement, yes, we have a leadership. I coordinate, but we have uh, Mwishimua Gladys Wanka, we have Mishi Mboko, we have Florence Mtua, we have Rosa Buyo, we have uh, Cass, uh, Rachel Shebesh, who the CS has given us to handle, and we have Anwe Guru, we have all the governors, and we are saying it is not a movement where you come and now talk about your political parties. Mm -hmm. No. We are saying it's a movement you come in for development. National That's development. National development. Mm. How we have Sabina Shege, we have Wamoshomba, we have many of them. We have a cross board, and we are saying, as women, we want to just focus on this development. Mm. Let us ensure when government is talking of something, engage yourself in that thing, mm -hmm. not for your sake, but for the sake of also other women to get aware of what is happening. We are saying, if it is the issue of referendum, remember, most of the time, Men talk of their issues so well. They come, they sit, they organize. The next thing you see is BBI. Did we know? No. So women, you've been left behind. Then one day you'll come and now start saying, oh, we were not there. Now we start complaining. We have said no complaint. And that's what Mama Chari Chingilu is saying, Her Excellency, the governor of Kitui, that 
you don't need to be complaining. You need to sit, Action. do your decisions, and mm. take it. And take on, it. Yes. All right. That's let, what let me saying. bring in Honra Bukirua. And uh, do you <laughs> feel that that approach is one that is possibly going to work for Kenya, having women come together and discuss national issues and hopefully push for their way uh, in a way that is likely to work? Because so far it has failed, even when we try and use the law. Well, I, I think... Uh, if it was not for the issue of gender, I would have wanted to join their team uh, from the explanation she's given, because that <laughs> is... You're welcome. You should you should <laughs> Even Sakata is there, my super governor, my super senator, so you're welcome. Okay, okay then I, yes, I'm joining you're you soon. Yeah, because thank you. why am I doing... Why am I saying so? You can see underlying all these activities is the issue of national cohesion. Yeah. If these women are coming together for purposes of achieving... The, 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 the agenda the president has set for Kenya, then the ultimate agenda will be national cohesion, mm -hmm. which has been elusive for many years. And if women are going to drive that, regardless of the political inclination, regardless of where they come from, but they realize there is something common in this country called Kenya that a section of our society has not been included, and that is the women folk. Mm -hmm. It is something that is commendable. It is something that we should support by all means. Now, the only thing that I would really want to caution them is the issue of, like, they are set against the rest of us. What we should mm. be doing is let us look for a common uh, denominator that brings us together. If it's the issue of the executive, whether you're expanding the pyramid of the executive, we maintain the, 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 the rule that a third of the cabinet, starting with the president, all the way down mm. must be of aid agenda. Mm. Mm. And that means if we are going to have the prime minister, two deputies, it means now the executive that, is expanded that, to mm. 25, yes. and therefore women will cease from being six, they will move to eight. Mm. Regardless of one is, whether one is a prime minister or a deputy prime minister, mm. then now merit comes in. There are so many women of merit mm. that if Kenyans were given models that this is team A, Mm. Team B, team, team C, and somebody models around that, and we are able to change our attitude that we are not antagonistic. Mm. We are going to achieve it we'll without achieve it. even the law. All right, Madam yeah. Elachi, there is a feeling yes. uh, generally that these are women who are coming to fight against men, but that would be um, a, a, that would fail. Mm -hmm. if, if that feeling continued. How do you intend to have this 50-50 proposal implemented without necessarily feeling like it's combative against men? It is really just about gender representation. You know, that's why, uh, and I want to thank Mushmua Kirwa. That's why we need Mushmua Kirwa, Mushmua Sakadi, and many others on board. Mm -hmm. So that it is a proposal that is a proposal for a country where we are saying both genders must sit and develop the country and if you want to succeed when both of you are on board and I, I and I saw yesterday when uh, not just yesterday when Trump was giving his uh, address state of the union state address, of the, of the union address. Mm. and you could see those women and for the first time America you'd see that Parliament when they were wearing white now is when you realize you need you need to have both genders in that house. Because if they are saying this is the first time they have the highest mm. and at least minorities are in, you imagine how that house used to look before. Mm. So we are, and it's not the, the looking of the dressing. <coughs> it is the mind. Mm. It is how we look at issues on a gender responsive way. Mm. That if I'm looking at budgeting, how am I looking at it? Am I in, inclusive where? If we are talking of that inclusivity that uh, is on the BBI nine point, mm. then inclusivity j doesn't just mean I am in that parliament. I am there, but I'm ensuring the budget is clearly gender responsive. We are able to benefit both men, women, boys and girls. And if indeed we agree with the policy from, as, uh, uh, from the beginning where we are saying in school this is what we are looking at. In high school we look at the same. We come to colleges, the same. same. What happens now when it comes to where decisions and policies are made that we feel very scared that now you don't need women on board, you don't need people with disability on board, mm. you don't need young people on board. It is not right. So we are saying if indeed we are talking of inclusivity, then let us have the 50-50. That does not mean you can achieve all, but it means you have a proposal on the table mm. and you negotiate to ensure the one-third 
is achieved at a, either level. Mm -hmm. That is at the executive. And indeed, as he says, our proposal as a, at the executive is fine. An expanded presidency, but ensure at least one or two women sit on that expanded presidency. Then we come to the cabinet, the same. Then we come even to this other diplomatic uh, appointments, appointments that yeah. are there. Yeah. We ensure, we come to parliament. If the committees, you are a man, then a woman will take. Or if a woman is a chair, mm. then let the deputies be, ma be a man. Mm. Even the speakers. And <clears throat> come down to the county assemblies, the same. So that we avoid, look at now the county assemblies, for example, where women are being told, because you were nominated, even though as uh, Embrace, we are also looking at that and we are saying, to, if we go to the mixed membership proportional uh, MMP, then you don't need this thing mm. of nominations yeah. anymore. Mm. But then we are saying for now, you find somewhere in Nyamira they removed women to vote. You find, uh, and it's not just Nyamira, many counties have done that. So these are proposals we are saying, let's look at what the constitution said Says. and okay. what we have not achieved <clears throat> right. and then bring together. All right, Honorable Kiro, one of the reasons why we may have failed to achieve this gender uh, parity so far is many things. There could be the cultural background that we're coming from, and that informs possibly one of the things I think one of the legislators mentioned is uh, to do with resources, okay. uh, to do with, um, you know, opportunity just being opened up. If we don't deal with those, how is this going to be sustainable, even if we had the 50-50, uh, you know, implemented? Because we need, for example, when it comes to political parties, uh, right from the grassroots, there needs to be a system that ensures it gives women a fair chance, which is not happening at the moment. Yeah, yeah I do agree with you entirely, uh, Michael, uh, because our own orientation is that uh, we are averse to women being in public life. Mm -hmm. All the time, uh, when a lady runs for a certain position, you ask, yourself, you ask is she married? Mm. But if a man of my age runs, nobody will ask whether <laughs> I'm married. Mm. They will assume I'm already married or, or you have some arrangement. Uh, you have several <laughs> wives and it is that, okay. That, and in yeah, and it's with okay. several wives, yeah. maybe you're even Oh, yeah, you are better. Yeah. You're better off. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that is the prejudice that we need first to remove from our society. Number two, we also need not just to have women in terms of numbers, but we need to have them in terms of positions of critical decision making. Correct. Because you can have 10 of them, but you don't consult them when it comes to critical decisions. Mm -hmm. And therefore, certain decisions will be taken that are at variance with society. And uh, because women are sort of socialized to think differently from us. And that's why we complement each other. Mm -hmm. They think they, they, they are able to keep some details as they think globally, they are also able to go for certain details that a man would find boring. Mm. And those are the details where the devil resides. Mm. The devil and those are some of the things we should do. <laughs> uh, finally, I still insist, as long as we still got this first pass at the post, yes. we will not be able to achieve that. No. But when we lock in constituencies, like let's say in, in Transoya, for example, where I come from, there are five constituencies, and you say party A, you give us a list of five individuals, of which two must be women. Party B, give us a list of five individuals, and so forth and so forth. And depending upon the number of votes that you get, then you will just cut off at a certain section. Mm. Let's say if you got like 80%, then you'll get four positions where two are likely to be women and two are men. Now, to advance that particular thinking, you don't need to go for a by-election. Mm. Yeah. In future, if somebody was number one dies, whoever was not picked on the list, next on next the list on is going to be picked. To pick. And you save yeah. the country yeah. from these by-elections. Absolutely. And you now build the party institution. Because as I've said before, we do not have strong parties in Africa mm. because nobody is loyal to the party. I'm loyal to party A today. Mm. Tomorrow, if I find convenience in moving to a party, jump to another party. I jump the same afternoon yeah. and I'll be here mm. in the studio defending Talking. the new position. Mm. That's the irony of like, criticizing where I've come from. <laughs>
<laughs> and yet I've been here for two years. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. Madam Elachi, do you see that as a formula that would possibly work, especially from, from the party level? Because that's another yes. problem we have. As yes. much as we are looking at the national government and the national leadership, that tire, if we look at the constitu uh, constituency level, where we have our parties and they're supposed to be at the grassroots, we still have a problem there. So, sustaining the national level when the roots are not properly set becomes a problem. Yes, and that's the best formula. MMP is the best formula. It's done in South Africa, and that's why in South Africa mm -hmm. they have sustained women in parliament and all uh, races. You find that women, people with, will always be in their parliament. Reasons because of that. So if we go to that, it will be the best proposal for the country. And as he says, it is also... It, it cuts down a lot of costs. It mm. cuts down political parties, divisive politics. And, and therefore, you'll play your politics, but in the end, you know. All of you are on a list. It depends now on how you work hard and ensure your party has more uh, mm. votes than the other party. Mm. We are also talking about corruption, which we know is a, is a, is a serious mm. issue, and we have serious proposals about uh, corruption. We are saying, uh, as women of embrace, that look, if you have taken the proceeds of this country and maybe you decide to bring back and, and uh, we are proposing give ourselves an amnesty of six months to call in for those who want to bring back. But just though so the punishment will be 10 years, you cannot work in any public uh, office. You can't hold office for 10 years. That's your punishment. You haven't gone to jail, but that's your punishment. We are saying we are also uh, looking now clearly. You can see how in the courts. Well, the lawyers say the best lawyer is the lawyer who keeps the file for many years. Mm. So they, they will want to go for 10 years with a case. No, we are saying corruption cases in six months, just the way we do it. electoral uh, uh, cases. It, we are done with it. Mm -hmm. We are saying land. Look at how. Uh, and it's very sad for me to see the, the, the kids of uh, uh, Kijana having all these challenges. It's because we have no law that says in six months, Families must ensure they have finished with issues of succession and inheritance so that the children don't become destitutes in this country. Mm. Uh, you, are, you have property, but it's not helping. It's helping the lawyers. They have kept the money. Mm. So the, the, and we are saying also in representation, which I know the governors will not be very happy. I can see they were also saying they want to ensure they open it up and say you can be there, a governor, four or five times. No. But we are saying... In, if a governor indeed uh, finalizes his ten terms, uh, his two terms, sorry, you don't need again to come to the Senate for the next five years mm. because we are auditing you at that time. Mm. So it means you'll mm. come and be, uh, if we mm. are uh, mm. playing around with corruption, mm. then this is where they will play on us. Mm. You come in and you decide to block everything that you know was done, and so you leave your governor, who has taken office, to have a lot of challenges in answering questions that were not his. Mm -hmm. So five years, or you can go to the National Assembly, but you cannot be in the Senate. Mm. That's what we are proposing. We are proposing in the executive that um, when you look at the way the governors will do their things, which is okay, but we are saying if indeed we are serious with our country and we are serious with corruption, within the executive, you as a governor, the moment you start your budgets at that time, for example, now the CIDP of this year, the senator must be on board so that he doesn't wait for the auditor general coming in to tell you now, here, you've done wrong. Now, it's like we are reading books. Five years have gone. The money is gone. What do we do? Then you become like uh, El Geo Maracuet County, where now I can see the CC's cars have the been cars grounded. have been grounded. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's because the mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. you are not part of the process. Even if it's not in the Constitution, mm -hmm. then we have to put it in the County Governments Act, mm -hmm. where we bring back a few regulations to assist mm -hmm. in ensuring right. the Senator and, and, and has we'll a, some powers mm -hmm to do the work that they're doing. And, and we'll need to wind up soon, but how, this, this sound like good ideas, grand ideas. How do you intend to formalize this, given that uh, uh, the team Embrace is a team that has come together, but how do you formalize it and now ensure that it is part of law? Well, we will uh, finalize this document and 
we will have a national convention so that we have more numbers and more voices coming in. Mm. We will put it in the papers because it's sort of a public participation process where now more women, more institutions can give, bring in their views and we put it together, go to BOMAS, we agree, adopt this uh, document and now present it to BBI mm. and tell them these are our proposals. Then the next step will be we want to follow up what are the, the, the document of BBI, where is it headed? They haven't told us yet, mm. but we are saying we are planning ahead so that we are not caught off guard. Off and guard. then you are told, oh, it was a document that is headed to a referendum. And mm -hmm. you're asking yourself, and I know... How come we were not involved? Yes, and, and, and I know it will be a formula where, again, you go back to BOMAS and mm. you ask Kenyans, do we go the referendum way of uh, universal suffrage or... Do we use the counties where you have 24 counties? They endorse this document, and after that, you have your document, and the constitution changes like that. Mm. So we are saying as women this time around, let us not be behind. We are coming. We are going to lobby our uh, fellow colleagues, Mwishimu uh, Akirwa here, and rest from different parties to say, look, let us enjoin. If you believe in this process and we know, the proposals we are putting on the table is what you believe in as an ideology. Mm -hmm. Kindly support us. Support us. Support All right. Us. Uh, Honorable Kirwa, now also looking at uh, BBI and the progress they're making so far in terms of uh, where Kenya wants to be. Mm -hmm. We have four years before uh, Jubilee's term ends. And there seems to be some uh, progress. There seems to be some motion. But is it moving fast enough for us to have some things sorted out before time? One of them being uh, the IEBC, of course, which has been a bone of contention in every election. <clears throat> well, uh, I do not know the details of what they are doing. But uh, first, allow me to thank this team, the Embrace team, because they are already thinking of ideas that we can input into the constitution. Mm -hmm. I think you're already sold. It looks like you already have a new member. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and I'm so happy. I want to the, thank him so much. They are much. so practical. Because yeah. you see, unless we engage things practically, we'll be pretending as Kenyans that everything is well. I've always maintained that this constitution needs to be audited so that Kenyans own it. Uh, because... Part of the problem that we, we suffered is that some of the people who are driving the process were people who had not gone through practical politics. And therefore, their own thinking was sort of utopian. And they were thinking of things that may not be practical. Uh, some of them, because of uh, a lot of jostling, did not engage in some of the clauses that you don't need to be a lawyer to understand there is a contradiction between Section 1 and Section so-and-so in a way that it can be harmonized such that we do not have some of these misgivings. Mm. Now, we've been informed also by practical realities. The way she has said, how can you, as a governor, then when you get out of uh, governorship, you move ahead to wait for the report from the Controller and Auditor General for it to be presented before the House, which you are now part of, to discuss your own report mm. and make amends to the report that came from you that audited to you. Like I've also, been thinking, and this is, I've said, and this is not in casting as passion to our current deputy president. I'm saying in future, if you are a good running mate to a president, serve 10 years, step out for five years, yeah. come back as a new individual, mm. asking for votes from Kenyans. Mm. That will also allow us to have effective transition, such that we should not be talking about a 2022 agenda, the four items of the agenda. Almost competing. Uh, competing, and yet they are supposed to be complementary. Mm. Because if the agenda of the president is achieved, the deputy president position will have been enhanced mm. because he's part of the team. Mm. So these are some of the things that I, I feel strongly persuaded. And uh, I just pray to Kenyans that this time round, let us look at this document called the Constitution of Kenya with the measure of sobriety. Mm -hmm. Let us not put individuals. Let's forget about Raila. Let's forget about Ruto. Mm. Let's forget about Uhuru. Mm. Let us think about a document that will serve us and posterity. Posterity. All right, uh, Madam Elachi, we'll need your closing comments as we wind up. Maybe your plea to Kenyans and for them to understand, first of all, Team Embrace and what you intend to achieve at the end of the day. Uh, as I finish, I just want to give him the last proposal, which he can go also think about. Mm -hmm. The last proposal we are also thinking is, you see this divisive uh, campaigns that we have, that the running mate, I mean, uh, the, the number two, 
who comes in after the president can also just be in the Senate so that mm -hmm. we don't find you outside there now mm -hmm. politicizing and uh, you are unable completely to work because you left someone with six million votes mm -hmm. who people look mm -hmm. at and wonder why did we give six million votes mm -hmm. so let them come to the senate and then the country cools down then now deal with all the issues you have when you are in one arm of government looking at the other so and and, and it will turn down all this rhetoric politics that we have. Mm. For us as Embrace, first of all, I want to thank all of them. Cecily Marire, wherever they are, uh, Governor Waiguru, Laposo, uh, Mangilu. We just want to say thank you, Kobia, for even embracing us on that day. And as we move forward, as I said, we shall have this national convention, which we believe from there we go to the counties. Let the women also understand these four agendas, because we speak at many conferences about them, but we haven't uh, um, unpacked them down, yeah. this agenda mm -hmm. and taken it to the ground that, look, when they are talking of Agenda 4, universal health care, how are you engaging in? What are we supposed to see as women? How is uh, uh, NHIF supporting you as a woman, as the elderly within the grounds? Mm -hmm. We want to look at uh, uh, industrialization when they are talking. Your young children, your youth, where are we headed? Are the polytechnics working? Fine. Every constituency has one. Has it been working? Or we are just, and yet we are saying 150,000 students have not gone to school. Why are we not doing this? The work of Embrace is to follow and look at every constituency. What is there that women can benefit for? For example, Kenyatta University. We have a fantastic hospital that was built by Oliver and her team. But today, we are not using it. Why? Because only 600 million has not been, I don't know, put in or something. Those are things we need to come as embrace and say, look, you cannot kill a project that has taken billions mm. because of 600, 600 million. million. Finalize it mm. and let the people start using, this is a hospital that is beyond mm. even Kenyatta National Hospital. Mm. It will assist and other issues. We are saying at the grassroots, if we are talking of the handshake, it was not a handshake just for the for top to bend your feet. Mm -hmm. It is a handshake where you on the ground must start feeling it. Feeling it in inclusivity, cohesion, and more important, development. All right. Yes. Uh, your closing comments on Rabukiro. Well, as a student, I'm persuaded, and I will take the assignment with all the strength and the robustness that is required. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Kipruto Rapkirwa, who is the Deputy Party Leader for ANC, and Honorable uh, Madam Beatrice Elachi, who is the Speaker for Nairobi County. Thank you for joining us this morning. And that is the State of the Nation. It's now 16 minutes to 8 o'clock. We take a break. We'll be right back with more stories making headlines. <laughs>